I think one of the things uh, I dislike the most, you know, when, when, when you have these situations that arise, these catastrophes, right? Um, I personally find it very difficult to engage the broader conversation um, because unless you unless you come with um, an approach or a mentality that is sanctioned by essentially uh, groupthink, then you're kind of castigated, right? And I'm not trying to be, um, you know, I'm, I'm not purposely trying to be like uh, uh, confusing or, I mean, I'll just put it blunt, right? Um, when I see things happen, like what happened with uh, Arbery, what just happened in, uh, you know, Minnesota, and when we see these things happen, you know, it is monstrous and it does, uh, I mean, it, it angers me because actually, you know, I myself have had what I, what I term two near death experiences with the police, right? Uh, one was in uh, Wisconsin and uh, the other was in Philadelphia. And there were two incidents where they both involved uh, me minding my own business and being accosted by the police at gunpoint to where I thought, well, this, you know, this could, this may be it. So I'm not speaking on this just hypothetically, right? Like I've been in these situations. Um, but I get very upset when, in what, from my point of view, seems to be the black community having been reprogrammed by liberal thought. And I know any time you start to criticize liberal thought, liberalism, especially in its, in its white form in America, right? If you are a person that is black and conservative, uh, which I guess that's what I am. I mean, I don't tend to think of myself, but I guess that's what I am, right? Uh, you will be labeled with, you'll be painted with the Uncle Tom brush, right? Um, and the reason that I say this is that, you know, how many times are we going to have these incidents happen and all the actors come out, right? I'm sure Al Sharpton has probably been in the news. I'm sure... Uh, uh, Cornell West has been in the news. All the normal liberal actors uh, will come out, and yet there's no, there's no change. There's no change in our culture. The other part that I find really disturbing is that for the most part, and this will seem, or uh, I think from a juvenile point of view, to be honest, will be seen as insensitive, but it does seem to be the only way that uh, a black person's life matters, even when it's taken, is if the person who takes it is white. And to me, this is like, this is amazing. This is, this to me is actually the real insidious part of how white supremacy works is that uh, as a value system, not people in white hoods burning crosses or using coarse language, right? But how black life is completely circumscribed, even from a value point of view, by whiteness. That uh, if a black person loses their life to a black person, there's no protesting, right? There's no rioting, there's no protesting, there's no demands for justice. But if a white person takes it, then we all lose our minds. And I'm, I'm just tired of this because one, Statistically, uh, even though I have had my near death experiences with the police, and I'm always very nervous anytime I have to have uh, you know any interaction with them. Let's be honest, I probably have a greater chance statistically of losing my life of somebody of the same ethnic group as myself, right? Um, case in point, I mean, just a few a few weeks ago. In Flint, Michigan, there was a, a security guard who was black working at a dollar store. And three black folks came in, got into a disagreement about having to wear a face mask. They went home, 
grabbed their firearms, came back and executed this man who was a family man, right? We all, we love to talk about the black family and black men and blah, blah, right? Well, here's three black folks that went home over a, an argument because they, one, they just didn't want to obey the rules of wearing a face mask. And they deemed his life of so insignificant value that they just executed him in cold blood. And yet, out of all my friends, and I'm calling everybody out, there was no shouts, there was no protest, there was no Zoom meetings, there was no outrage. Matter of fact, uh, to be quite honest, man, and I'm gonna just keep it real, a lot of people were like, especially coming from the black point of view, the few people that I talked to, they're like, oh man, that's just some savage Negroes, man. That's just a bunch of blanks, right? Uh, doing what they do, right? But when this, you know, when this shades on, sat on this man's neck for nine minutes, which is unbelievable. Yeah, he should. They sh this shouldn't even be a trial. They should actually just give all of those police officers at the scene, they should give them the same treatment. They should just sit on their neck for nine minutes and then that's it. That's it. Just There should be no trial, right? So I don't want anybody to confuse about how I feel about it. But what I'm tired of is only outrage when there is a white perpetrator. And I'm sorry, statistically, there is far more, uh, uh, forget about black on black crime, because that's such a, you know, that, that term is so emotionally charged that as soon as you mention it, uh, you'll be completely, you know, you'll, you'll just be, you know, you'll be ejected, right? It's just, why do we not value our own selves, right? These are the deeper psychological issues that are going to have to be tackled in order for us to be able to hopefully move beyond this and figure out how, um, you know, or rather in order to figure out how to make these things stop, it will not be through legislation. Again, I know this is not what the liberals want to hear, and this is not what the black community that has been completely brainwashed by, by, uh, by liberals, is that they think you can legislate your way out of this. Well, if that were the case, we passed civil rights laws, you know, what, 70 years, 60, 70 years ago, right back in the 60s, it's now 2020, and we have not legislated this away. This is partly because um, we just don't value ourselves. Until we deal with these deep psychological issues, uh, I don't believe, because that's what's going to really apply pressure, right? There's certain groups in America that they don't go through this and they are minorities, right? They don't go through this. And in fact, the police know not to even perpetrate these crimes upon them because they are in positions of influence and authority where they can bring, you know, not simply shame, because that, that only gets you so, so far, they can bring crushing economic and legislative pressure. Um, and that comes from them not being the stereotypical uh, conspiratorial things. It's one, just they have a sense of solidarity, right? Um, they have a sense of solidarity, which is what we lack, let's be honest. And that is what, over the last, I would say, 80 to 100 years, that is exactly what liberalism has done in the black community. It has completely eroded and destroyed any real potential for black solidarity. Uh, matter of fact, it usually, black solidarity usually is confronted and dismantled in the guise of tolerance, in the guise of diversity, of which those frameworks are so deeply constructed in a way that they will never meet the needs and the demands of, of, of black folks, of African Americans. Um, it will only continue to, from a social or from a societal point of view, it will just continue to make us weak. And I know this is not what everybody wants to hear. I know in a moment that it's, you know, uh, emotions are high and I get it. When I saw you know, to be honest, when I saw that man crushing his windpipe, crushing his neck, I could just, all I could think about was, why didn't somebody just jump in? 
I mean, how, how can this, this is insanity, right? So I don't want this to be mistaken for the typical black conservative view that, uh, in, in, which I think is, which is correct. The typical, or at least up to date black conservative view, at least through my observation, through the GOP Republican, it doesn't seem to be very sensitive or um, emotionally connected to the reality of black folks. It seems, it actually seems to be more about the appeasement of, uh, of the white majority, just in that case, the conservative white majority. So there are definitely some worthwhile criticisms we can uh, level at black conservatism. Uh, however, because there are criticism doesn't mean that, and clearly, liberalism is the solution. Um, and I'm just tired of looking at statistics that cannot be ignored, of how we habitually, year after year, decade after decade, just can continue to devalue our own lives to where we take them, right? We will take black life without thinking about it, right? But then we'll still go all up in arms uh, when there's a white perpetrator. Um, and therefore, you know, it, it bothers me, especially as a religious person that believes, you know, where the Quran says, you know, to kill one person is to kill all of humanity, to save one life, right, is to save all of humanity. Um, it deeply bothers me of not being able to be more vocal from a Muslim point of view, particularly as somebody in a re religious uh, leadership position. But part of that silence, so to speak, is mainly due to the fact that I cannot truthfully express my thoughts and I cannot express my points of view without these just ad hominem attacks or being labeled as some sort of like conservative Uncle Tom. And therefore, um, I will probably continue to be largely, except for who knows, maybe this video will get some traction. Uh, otherwise, you know, I would just, you know, I will not, I cannot sacrifice my intelligence at the altar of, of liberal selective outrage. Uh, especially an outrage that really at its root serves no benefit or purpose to the black community, will preserve no future black lives, will resurrect no black lives from the dead. Uh, so if black lives really matter, then the black community is going to itself have to be willing to have a broader conversation uh, about what needs to happen and what needs to be done. There needs to be a different paradigm for the assessment of the problem that it is not uh, only legal in nature, um, and we gotta we gotta tackle these 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 issues of self value and self worth. Uh, otherwise, white supremacy will continue to actually hide out in plain sight, where we only see the boogeyman version of white supremacy, but we don't see the one that often we as black folks are carrying around ourselves. So. I pray that Allah will allow us to, you know, one, may, may Allah indeed continue to guide, uh, you know, all of us, but in particular, may Allah continue to guide the, the black community uh, to Islam, to, to, because I do believe Islam is a, it is, it is far more than a religion. It is a, it is a way of seeing reality that I believe is the only means of truthfully not only dispelling white supremacy, but of dispelling all idolatry. And white supremacy is just simply one, uh, it is simply one manifestation, one shade or one hue of idolatry. Uh, and that is what we are really in the throes of. We are not in the throes of only white supremacy, but we are really in the throes of idolatry. Um, idolatry of the mind, idolatry of the soul. Um, so if, if we can have this broader conversation, I'm more than happy to you know, jump in and attend uh, you know, whatever you know, protests or whatnot in, the, in bringing it to, uh, a, 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 I think, an, a, a conversation that will, bear, bear, that will actually bear fruit, unlike what has happened up until now, which has borne uh, absolutely no fruit. These are my opinions. If you disagree, of course, you know, leave your, com leave your, your comments or, or whatnot. Um, what just like a lot of
Assalamualaikum.